Docetism was an early Christian heresy that dates back possibly as early as the 1st century AD. As with many heresies, what we know about it is largely restricted to what was written about it by its detractors. The current view of Docetists is that they believed that the physical body of Jesus was an illusion and not real, or at least not physically made of flesh and blood like other humans. The term was first used by Serapion, Plutarch of Antioch, from 191 to 211 AD, probably writing around 200 AD. We don't have the original, but Eusebius quotes a pamphlet he wrote about the Gospel of Peter to the Christian community of Rosas in Syria. But in denouncing the Gospel of Peter, Serapion does not explain what was wrong with it, nor what features of it led him to describe it as Docetist. The Gospel was lost and then rediscovered in fragmentary form in 1886 in Egypt, about six miles north of Nag Hammadi, where in 1945 the Nag Hammadi Library was found. The elements that are now interpreted as docetist are quite subtle. It says that while Jesus was being crucified, he remained silent as though in no pain. Then his last words from the cross were, My power, my power has forsaken me after which Jesus did not die, but was taken up into heaven. Other early heresy hunters, some earlier than Serapion, described beliefs that were later grouped together as docetist. These were views of Christology, or the nature of Christ. Docetists seem to have rejected the idea that Jesus was a man, but they do have a common theme that Jesus seemed to be, or appeared to be, a man. There is no known reference in ancient literature which refers to a belief in which a docetist Christ was specifically mythical and did not appear on earth at all, and thus there is no unambiguous trace of the so-called missing heresy of the missing heresy argument covered in my video of that name. However, there are cases that mention a belief that Jesus did not come in the flesh without any accompanying mention of him appearing to come in the flesh. Irenaeus lived from 130 to 202 AD. He refers to at least seven heretical groups that were later referred to as Docetic, but is vague about their beliefs, and what these groups had in common seemed to be the belief that Jesus had not been what Irenaeus understood him to be. He was probably citing Justin Martyr when he wrote that Simon Magus, that is Simon the Sorcerer of Acts 8, after being cast out by the apostles, went to Rome where he took up with a woman called Helen and proclaimed that he himself had appeared in Judea as Jesus, in Sumeria as the Father, and elsewhere as the Holy Spirit. Simon's followers claimed he, as Jesus, quote, had descended, transfigured and assimilated to powers and principalities and angels, so that he might appear among humans to be a human, while yet was not a human, and thus he was thought to have suffered in Judea when he had not suffered. A Gnostic group, the Basilidians, claimed that the father had sent his firstborn, Nous, who was Christ, to save those who believed in him from the power of the makers of the world, the evil lower gods of Gnosticism. He was on earth and did great things, but his appearance was an outward show only, and he was not really made of flesh. Jesus then exchanged forms with Simon of Cyrene, and looking on in Simon's form, mocked those who conducted the crucifixion. He then ascended to heaven. Then other Gnostics believe that he, quote, never became incarnate nor suffered, but that he descended like a dove on the dispensational Jesus, and that as soon as he had descended to the unknown father, he did again ascend to the pleroma, the pleroma being part of the Gnostic astrotheological concept of heaven. Irenaeus makes brief mention of another group who described Jesus as being human only in appearance, and others who held that he, quotes, did become incarnate and suffered, who they represent as having passed through Mary just as water through a tube. Irenaeus did not know these heretics as docetist, but simply as Simonians, Basilidians, Marcionites or whatever. Clement of Alexandria lived from 150 to 215 AD. He, Hippolytus, and others of the 2nd century and later did classify docetists as a group. So overall, from the 2nd and 3rd century sources, Docetist appears to reflect a collection of pre-Trinitarian Christologies that were heretical insofar as they differed from what eventually led to the Trinitarian doctrine. In most of these heresies, the heresy hunters imply that whatever these Christologies may have been, Jesus appeared to be a man. This is distinct from the mythicist position, which would be the same except that Jesus never appeared to be a man but go earlier in time and the distinction is no longer so clear. 
The nature and form of our current understanding of docetism comes largely from the Gospel and Epistles attributed to John. In John's Gospel, Jesus is more God than human. He walked on water, passed through closed doors. He could not be captured by his enemies, and he could not be deceived because he knew what humans were thinking. He deliberately allowed Lazarus to lie dead for four days to make his resurrection more dramatic and chose to go to his own death, which he saw as a victory. So what kind of human is this? Further, Paul refers to him in the likeness of the flesh rather than in flesh. Here in Romans 8 verse 3. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh, in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Which all looks rather godly or docetist rather than historicist, but then the three epistles of John are at pains to underscore the physical humanity of Jesus. These passages are defending a historicist view against an opposing view. As I go through them, consider what is the view they are opposing, Docetism or mythicism? So 1 John 1 verses 1 to 3. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testify to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us, and our fellowship is with the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ. 1 John chapter 4, 1-3 Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognise the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus Christ is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. Then 1 John chapter 5 verses 6 to 9. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are in agreement. We accept human testimony, but God's testimony is greater, because it is the testimony of God, which he has given about his Son. Finally, in 2 John verse 7, I say this because many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh have gone out into the world. Any such person is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch out that you do not lose what we have worked for, but that you may be rewarded fully. Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teachings of Christ does not have God. Whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not take them into your house or welcome them. Anyone who welcomes them shares in their wicked work. So the opposing position that's implied, that Jesus did not come in the flesh, makes no mention of the appeared-to-be-human part of docetism that Serapion, Clement and Hippolytus describe. Hence the mythicist idea that the original intention of the Epistle of John was not to denounce docetism, as we now see it, but to denounce mythicism. Further, the docetist heresy did later exist, but the reason for its prominence in scholarship now is not because of its importance, but rather because it provided the church with a way to explain these passages without having to admit that there were people at the time who believed that Jesus was wholly spiritual and not human at all. So let's just suppose it happened this way. The earliest Christians were mythicists. Historicization occurred along the lines proposed by current mythicists or otherwise. The historicist church gained the upper hand and wrote the literature that has come down to us in the New Testament. This contained denouncements of heresy as they knew it, i.e. mythicism, the belief that Jesus was purely spiritual. Fifty years later and there is a wide and diverse range of Christologies, originating out of the same confusion that led to historicity in the first place. Early heresy hunters catalogued these. Later still, heresy hunters identify a category of heresy they call docetist. 
Further time passes and the original mythicist heresy either fades into history or becomes particularly anathema. But now, widely circulated works dating from the first years of the Church contain denouncements of this heresy. Then one of two things happens. Either church leaders see mythicism as being particularly vile and wish to exterminate any trace of it and therefore explain away refutations in early literature as being about the less objectionable docetism than mythicism, or alternatively, mythicism largely faded into history and church leaders interpret early denouncements as being relevant to heresies that they recognise such as docetism. And just like that, the mythicists have their missing heresy. The alternative historicist view is that Jesus was a man who evolved into a God-man, but that this God-man always has and still does imply some cognitive dissonance. This dissonance was managed, if not resolved, by the Trinitarian doctrine. Prior to the Trinitarian doctrine's acceptance, this cognitive dissonance led to a wide range of other Christologies, some of which were docetist. These two explanations are not equally convoluted. Doctrinal change within a church generally involves a noisy argument. If Jesus started as a god and evolved into a god-man, then you'd expect to see some noisy arguments about the man bit. And we do. Docetism. If, on the other hand, Jesus started as a man and evolved into a god-man, you'd expect to see some noisy arguments about the god bit. Which we don't. The Arian heresy doesn't really count, as it was the belief that Jesus did not exist before his birth. He was created by God and therefore subservient to God ever after. However, Arianism still has him as God straight out of the box. The historicist explanation therefore has Jesus starting as a man, evolving silently into a God-man, and then once that had happened, a noisy argument breaks out about the man bit. So overall, the issue of docetism is rather obscure and poorly defined, but on balance I would say that it does favour mythicism.